竞技。这边杜朗胡德过去一个半天飞跃，到不到，超不到两个人。谁是前的小胖王子？右边跳掉了 ，Regulus。まあそうですね。やっぱり改めて思ったのは、やっぱどのチームもすごく強いなっていうのは今日思いました。Play in stage today. We find out which teams from Group C and D advance to the next stage of Worlds, and which two teams will end their Worlds run here. You can see the stadium heating up, getting ready. A lot of logos. Only a couple of those teams going to make it through, and of course, the fans excited to be there. Rampage getting ready for their final, or what could be their final. Yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. They still have a chance to fight back. <laughs> Of course, coming in this. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Dracos, and joining me are the newest additions to my premier PUBG squad. Of course, we have Mark Zimmerman. He feeds, uh, and on the other side, we have the BDD of PUBG, Zach Rusty Pie. Thank you, Rusty, for joining us to carry yet another portion of my life.、Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Of course, KDA King himself of PUBG. There's so much wrong with that intro. There's almost no factual <laughs> well, <laughs> statements in that intro. Luckily, it's not about your self-confidence, Mark Z. Luckily, today is about the last four teams promoting to the play-in elimination stage. And if we pull up the standings, we can see that Fnatic. And Chaos Latin gamers are poised to move on from Group C, with 1907 Fenerbahce and Hong Kong Attitude aiming to do the same in Group D. But Young Generation and Rampage can still shake the standings with our first games of the day. It's going to start with that rematch between Hong Kong Attitude and Rampage, followed by Young Generation hoping to get revenge against Chaos Latin gamers, with their groups completing their second round robin and all necessary tiebreakers throughout the day. After the seats from each groups are locked in, stick around after the show for the presentation of the elimination stage draw live from Wuhan. Now, I think one of the big standouts, one of the big surprises in Group A and B, Lion Gaming came up big. But here, if we look at Group D, Fenerbahce came out swinging on their first day of play. Yeah, they actually upset HK. It's the first time a number one seat has lost here in the playing stage. That, in and of itself, is a huge story. And also the way that they did it, they were down a little bit early game. They turned it on the team fighting stage. They were able to seal away objectives. Everything started clicking. Yeah, show they can play. Slow League of Legends and still make it work successfully through the team fights, but the big place we have to look at is Crash. Regarding them in particular, he played outstandingly. He was aggressive. Communication issues may not seem to be a thing because Frozen can do the brunt of that, but it worked out. Yeah, and when you're coming in with an emergency substitute and everything feels like it could just go wrong when you add a new player to the mix, and that player comes in and steals you two Barons、uh, back to back to keep you in a game, feels like a pretty out of anything that could have happened with an emergency substitute. Feels like Fenerbahce definitely won out. Yeah, it feels like if if you get on the Same way that you kind of played even close to it before the substitution, it's a great thing. And the fact that he's come in, he's done well in terms of also early game, just pressuring where he needs to. Sometimes helping out that bot lane that tends to lose a little bit, but making sure it never gets blown wide open. Yeah, definitely best case scenario for Fenerbahce as far as they're concerned. Maybe they wanted move here, but it's not the case, and they'll be happy nonetheless. And I feel like just across the board, we saw pretty solid performances from this team. Thaldren coming in clutch, frozen in the mid lane. Of course, the big、uh, step up was the AD carry on the bottom side of the map. I think that's the big thing for a lot of people because he was probably the most criticized member of this team. Coming into the tournament, and while you can see that those were somewhat valid, and that he struggles in the laning phase, once he's out of it, he he is doing way better than expected. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's been doing surprisingly well in the team fights. Gets the pentakill three v five without the Koreans even there in the roster. So perhaps they are the secret strength after all. But it's not just him, of course. I look towards the mid lane. I'd say that Noel is someone that stood out between games. Sorry, not Noel. You know what? I give up. Frozen. 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 Yeah, Frozen, who's someone that I surprisingly didn't step up. That's where I wanted to go with this. The reason that I bring him up is because he's spending so much. Much time communicating with Crash that it all actually makes them come together nicely as a team around that AD carry.、Yes. And if we look at it on the opposite side, we look at hey, these guys are starting to upset the top of their group. One team very close to being upset was Fnatic. Very long, very grueling game, and felt like things just were not going well for them at the start of that. It wasn't going well, but the one thing that did go well for Fnatic was the bottom lane consistently performing incredibly. Reckless did his absolute best, but so did Jessus, even getting the Rakan and having these crazy engages, crazy performances. I've been super impressed with those two. Right, but like Dragos was saying, not all sunshine and roses. They did have a big problem in the mid lane. The fact that、uh, Caps felt like in game two he went for a little bit of a 
a stylish pick going for the LeBlanc. I know it's a good champion, but it wasn't necessary in that comp. Ends up backfiring horribly as Null is able to take him to town for most of that game. And now the question remains, what form of Fnatic are we going to see today? Because we look at Young Generation on the opposite side. Null stepping up huge. You mentioned him earlier. Uh, <laughs> he did not have a great <laughs> first game. He did not connect in a lot of the mechanical plays, but he looked like a completely different player coming into his second match against Fnatic. I think that's the big thing is, is you have to think about maybe nerves are a little bit of a play in them for because it was the first game of the day and he just missed a ton of stuff on Syndra. Looked really bad, W's off, stuns off, and then the second day he comes in and smashes one of the best mid laners in Europe. So you have to give him a little bit of credit there and say that hopefully that part of the performance continues. It's fair to say he found himself a bit more so, and in tournaments like this, best of ones, all you have to do is show up in that one game and potentially get the victory and as unfortunate it is for them that they don't get it we still saw so many good things from them coming into today they might be able to upset if that improvement continues and we had talked a lot yesterday about how top lane was a weakness and we do have an update nocti is now subbing in the other top lane that the young generation has and i know this makes you very happy mark c you're a big nocti fan i wouldn't necessarily say i'm a huge nocti fan i just uh seeing what we saw in the finals as well as what we saw to ren uh in the first two games he was clearly the the member of the team that was struggling the most and nocti can play those tanks, plays that more team-centric style, and it allows them to focus more on letting Null step up and continue to carry. It feels like maybe they just have to bring him in to reverse sweep with Nocti. There's no way of putting him in first. How they got I mean, here, technically, they it's going to be two together. losses. <laughs> they win the tiebreaker, that's three in a row. Hey, they could do it. Could turn it around. And I think this is the issue for Ren, right? We came in, he said, hey, this is the guy that likes to split push. This is the guy that likes to keep the ball rolling. But... Ultimately, you come onto a stage, you're playing against different players with different styles. Maybe what you're doing in your own region just does not work out when it comes into a player who's normally used to dominating these 1v1s. I think that's definitely the case because you saw that Renekton game. He he had a small advantage but wanted to push it further versus Montaraya and he just couldn't do it. The, ch the Cho'Gath was just too much for him to handle and that's probably a matchup he's comfortable in his own region, didn't execute it here. Yeah, for me it's the carry players that really do struggle coming to the international stage against someone else that plays carries or is playing tanks to a higher level above those expectations. That's where the regional problems can come into play. And it just feels like tanks, unlike the, those high pressure one three one kind of split pushers, are always just going to have a relevance and so even if your player may be not as strong, they can sit back, they can take more of a backseat role, whereas if you're used to this guy carrying games, it does tend to throw a wrench in the works when you are relying on him normally. Yeah, and he hard committed into the carry role when he was playing the Renekton. and it wasn't build one carry item, team fight with the rest of the team. He went Blade of the Ruin King, he fully committed himself to that split push, and it didn't work out in the end, and perhaps that's why Nocti is showing up. And so we overall, are we thinking that this is probably going to be a positive change for the team, or is this still kind of a big question mark on the side of Young Generation? I think it's a little bit of a question mark, just because we already saw two very different games between the team. Ren, like we said, was the one consistent member slightly underperforming so if you're going to go uh, with that Gragas game plan that they seem to play better with and Nocti is the tank player then it seems like the intelligent thing to do to sub him in. Well we're going to see how it unfolds but if you're looking for a way to chip into the world's hype look no further than the newest editions of the championship line and as a reminder 25% of the proceeds from championship ash and the ward skin purchases are going to be added to that world's prize pool an additional 25% is also going to be donated to charity you can also unlock the championship ash chroma through the world's mission which is available through all of worlds. Personally, I love the Chroma. I think it's fire. We got to see it already. But that's enough from us. We're going to send it over to the Caster to get you in the first game of the day. So Pyra and Frosk, take it away. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm Devin Pyra Tanks Young. And of course, it's a 2014 LPL reunion because I'm joined by my BFF, Indiana Frosk in Black. Yeah, I still can't get away from this guy. I traveled over 9,000 miles, and yet here I am again. Yep, friendship is, ma friendship is magic. Now, team banners are lifted, and the fans are ready for our first game of the day. It is Hong Kong Attitude versus Rampage. So let's kick things off by taking a look at our starting lineups. On the red side for this game, representing the LOL Japan League, it is Rampage. In the top lane, we've got Evie in the jungle, Tussle. Mid laner, Ramune. Bot lane, Yutori Moyashi. Support Dara and their coach, 3-4. And of course, on the blue side, it is going to be Hong Kong Attitude, led by Coach Tabe. In the top lane, it's going to be Rerus. In the jungle, it's God Kwai. Mid lane is Mission. Un uh, unified in bot and Kai Wing in support. Yep, mentioned Tabe, the coach. Now, for Hong Kong Attitude, they really got to take care of business here if they want to contest for that top spot. Getting upset, not a good way to start if you want to go far at Worlds. And the thing is, is it's about where they need to tighten up, uh, identifying specifically where the weaknesses were. Now, they uh, dominate a lot of the lane phase. They are known as a very lane dominant team. They say them, they say so themselves in the LMS. They're very respected for that. But some of these macro decisions, some of these setups around big objectives, it was the two big Baron steals. You know, it didn't have to be a 50-50 Baron against 1907 Fenerbahce. They could have waited for the top creeps to push in on the inhib that they had broken earlier, taken a much 
much smarter play and a much cleaner performance. So HKA, for me, it's about total dominance. They talked about revenge here. No, it goes way past that. They need to prove that they are actually a top 16 team because those are their goals. It's not just to make it into group stage. It's to go the distance. Yeah, I mean, that's big words for this team, and they definitely have the skill to do it. We've seen their impressive laning performances. That's what the team had focused on pretty much extensively. We heard it from Tabe as well. It was all about getting those solo queue stats up. But... If they don't get the wins, you know, they might need a Hong Kong attitude adjustment. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I mean, they started the season two and five. They then ended the back of it five and two. And a lot of that was because they split their attention. They were trying to grind that solo queue, trying to find these big, you know, mechanical performers. In fact, if you go all the way back to HK, they've had over 16 players rotating through that roster. They used to have this big kind of a prodigy mid laner in gear, and they decided to change him up for mission, you know, coming from Fireball, formerly from uh, TPA, you know, playing behind someone like Toys. and. To, to put gear on a sideline after the reputation that he was creating in the LMS to pick up mission, it just goes to show that Tabe had a very clear goal in mind when trying to create this powerhouse that is now the third seed for the LMS. Oh, they definitely need to start putting up those results to go behind the powerhouse. Now, on the other side, I want to flip things around here for you, Frost. How can Rampage exploit those known weaknesses of HKA. Okay, Rampage, it's been pretty rough for the LJL squad, but I feel like it's all about Tussle in particular. Tussle and Dara, really. Tussle has been known as being more of a, uh, a a versatile jungle. He can play the hard carry, he can play more of the the Cinder Hulk, the tank. I feel like the meta is shifting more so into those carry-oriented junglers. We've even seen the likes of Elise and a lot of Jarvins running around, and I would like to see Tussle step up, especially because if you're gonna hit HKA anywhere where they're weak, it actually is in their jungle pool. God Kwai was formerly an 80 carry. He's only played 10 games for jungle. He started in their series against J Team. They just liked the results that they got. But this isn't actually their starting jungler. That's Gemini. And he's still sitting on the bench, kind of waiting to see if HK need to flex him and need to change up that style. So, Tussle, you have the opportunity. You can exploit this guy, but you need to step to the task. Yeah, maybe put himself on something a little bit more comfortable, as you were saying. On the other side, what's looked like a little bit of comfort has been the 80 carry. Yutari Miyashi but he's not necessarily been unlocked. They've been targeting Dara's champion pool pretty consistently, and I didn't like that Soraka pick. I mean, I agree with you, but you can kind of see the mentality that they're going for. They have a hyper carry ADC. They pair him up with the Soraka. They're trying to go late game, get the Ardent Sensor. The problem was is they didn't get the bridge because they didn't get the performance from that early and mid game to carry over and allow their ADC to be that superstar. So yeah. then again, it goes back into focusing on Dara, on Tussle. You guys need to step up, control the early game, control this dominant lane phase from HKA, and then allow your ADC to roll over into mid game, to roll over into late game. But so far, Rampage just simply haven't gotten there. Yeah, and the draft as well. I mean, I, I criticized obviously the Soraka, but also they've allowed some things through. We, we saw the Zyra Khan coming up when they could have yep. at least picked one away. And, and honestly, it's not super encouraging to look at the last results Rampage had against Hong Kong Attitude because it kind of just started sliding out of the control very, very early on. But I want to stay away from the assumption that they just blundered the draft. For all we know, the coaches could have walked out of it and said, yes, we wanted to prioritize the Maokai. Yes, we felt confident enough that we could absorb them in the lane phase, take the Soraka, as opposed to them just being blind to the power of Zion Rakan. But we should see how things shift up here as we're now in champion select. All right, Talia comes off the board quickly, and it's going to be followed by the Kalista. And instantly, no more Cho'Gath available for either their top laner, so Hong Kong Attitude on the blue side kicking things off there. And there's a Recon ban by Rampage. Yep, so already the adaptation going through. We saw a Unified and Kai Wing really take two with the Zaya and the Recon. Unified has only played Zaya so far in this tournament. Now, if you look at their big uh, run through the through the uh, regional qualifiers to even get here, it was more about the Tristana. So even if that Zaya gets uh, pinched, although they do have priority pick, Unified can still you know, fall back to things like the Tristana, which he's very comfortable on. Mm -hmm. Definitely have had a lot of experience on that Hong Kong attitude side. And Sejuani now banned away. That's been a pretty perennial jungle pick, so we'll see something a little different here. And with the last bans already done, means we get a first pick of the Jarvan locked in. Okay, so a lot of flex pick coming out here. It can go down into Godquai's hands. It can go up into the top lane uh, for Rerus there. That does mean that the Zaya is open and available to deny from Unified. I talked about his comfort on the Tristana, so maybe Rampage are thinking that it's more worth to uh, to fight over the Trist than, than the Zaya, but so far Unified has looked very comfortable on both champions. All right, so we might get to see an AD carry locked in on the Rampage side, but we already have the Rek'Sai picked up, so this is still more of the same from Tussle. And I feel like Rek'Sai is kind of one of the champions that's really rising up in the world's meta right now. Uh, a lot of versatility with their build. You can go oh, yeah. the Warriors, uh, previously of the Cinder Hulk. There's the Tristana that I was talking about. I'd love to see them lock it in. I think it just offers everything that they want. Yeah, well, I want to see what they end up pairing support-wise because 
This time there's only been one support banned away from Dara, so we'll find out if that changes or if they take it for the last rotation here. But already the, you know, the strength that we set up for Rampage, we've already got out of their first two picks. We wanted to see a more aggressive jungle pick from Tussle. Rek'Sai certainly offers that as well as the ability to be that CC bot going late. And then you have the super uh, hyper scaling ADC with the Tristana. So already out of the gate, I like what Rampage are putting together in terms of the team strengths. Mm -hmm. But over on the Hong Kong attitude side, you can see they're building themselves up a little bit more catch. The Syndra already locked in. It's going to be a solid landing phase for mission, most likely. Now let's see if they end up following through with this Varus for Unified. That's a lot of CC on that team already. Yeah, you said CC, you said catch. I'm going to call it just straight pick, which means that if Hong Kong Attitude ever suffocate Rampage out of an area, ever get their Syndra ahead and have kill pressure on someone, it is very terrifying to walk into dark corners of the map. So we criticized their Baron setup, their Dragon Control yesterday. It was kind of the big catalyst that allowed 1907 Fenerbahce to really punish them. With Syndra and Varus, it becomes that much more easy to control those areas of the map. Mm -hmm. And now Rampage, they do end up locking in a support for themselves. So Dara has the Braum. This is a pretty classic combination with Trisana. You can get that stack up really easy to get stuns off. And this is looking like a much better protection style composition for Yutari Miyashi. And also, Pyro, you're getting everything that you want. You want Dara on a more playmaking support. You want to tussle on more of an early aggressive jungler. Uh, uh, Yutori on that hyper carry. So, like I said, I'm totally happy with Rampage. I feel like they're making the correct adjustments coming into the next day. See if it continues right now. The composition definitely starting to take shape. Now as we enter the next stage of bands, Shen's off the table, and so is the Corkster. Uh, Corky, of course, has a decent laning phase across from Syndra, just because he can itemize into the Hex Drinker, uh, deny a lot of her burst. He's pretty safe there, can move around it. Also just strong against laning. So I like the fact that they're trying to pinch and control that matchup. Yeah, on Rampage's side, they're going to start banning out a couple of supports. The Lulu, at least, is one, as they already had the Recon from earlier on. And now LeBlanc's banned away also by Hong Kong Attitude, so Ramane might find himself a little bit forced into something different. I was just going to bring up the Lucian. Yes, the Corky's been taken away. Cassiopeia has been nerfed, so probably don't want to go towards that matchup, but Lucian still fares very well into Syndra. The ability to Relentless Pursuit around a lot of her orbs, uh, again, can itemize into that Hex Drinker if he really feels that he's being pinched and needs more of a defensive build, and still has kill pressure there. Yeah, and Ramane's already faced off against Mission Syndra in their previous game. Uh, spoiler alert, he kind of got bopped, uh, but then again, so did the entire team. That was on Orianna. This time, he'll have something a little bit more mobile, so it goes over HK side and they get a quick lock in on the Galio. That means we are very likely to see that Jarvan in the jungle. Uh, yeah, and it's the fact that it's probably another Galio top lane. Now, coming into Worlds, Galio was played top around 32% of the time globally. Now, since Worlds play-ins has started, he's been played top 75% of the time. So we're seeing a massive swing of more Galios being flexed into the top lane versus the mid lane. And I feel like a lot of that's actually connected to the jungle picks. We're seeing a lot more warrior enchantment junglers as opposed to Cinderhulk. So you need to have that tank. A lot of tanks are going up into the top lane, and Galio slots perfectly in there because he's going to be just as tanky and bring a lot more you know, cross-map mobility, especially when Shin is banned. But Rampage have decided they want to answer that with a little bit more firepower, so the Rumble's actually locked in. Gives them a little bit of extra damage across the board rather than just locking another tank. Of course, they've already got two very solid tanks. Even if the Rek'Sai does go Warrior, still kind of hard to break through that shell. And so far, we have a very well-balanced composition. I, I look at Rampage, and I feel like there's a lot of what I call bridging power, and it's champions that are responsible for picking up the early game, then handing that baton off into mid-game power spikes, then handing the baton off again into late game. So it kind of starts with Lucian and Rek'Sai. It can then hand over into Rumble, and then they finally pass it over into Trish into Tristana's hand. So I felt like yesterday Rampage maybe drafted a little bit too much for the 5v5, the late game, and then got blown up before they got there. This composition is going to serve them much better to survive this very hard and aggressive lane phase from HKA. I was about to say let's transition that a little bit to HK because it seems like they're doing what they do best, which is dominate on those laning phases. How big of a lead are they going to have to really build, though, if they still have some of those troubles around objectives? How much do they have to do to make sure that it's not a 50-50, it's a 60-40 or 70-30? Well, then it's about focus in the mid lane. You look at the composition that they've put together. Varus, Janna, there's not a ton of opportunity to gank that early until Varus has the CC. You've got the Janna, so you're probably not going to die down there with the disengage. It's Galio up into the top into Rumble. So, you know, maybe you go up there, but it sounds much better to be like Jarvan Syndra. Yeah, that's probably where I'm going to camp. <laughs> I think mid lane is definitely going to be the place to watch at the start of this game, but Hong Kong Attitude looking to put the 2-0 onto Rampage and try to climb their way to the top of that group. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it as we load up onto Summoner's Rift for our first game of Day 4 here at the Play-Ins.
And again, attention about where these teams, what type of options they have into the early game. Uh, I mean, I don't need to point out the HKA combo of Jarvin and Galio. They got the classic cannonball there. That works very well in a 5v5. And if you don't kill anybody with that, you just start dropping an R onto somebody who's still stuck in the pit with Syndra. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it can be a bit of a wombo. And that's the big thing. You know, Dara has to be so on point in this game simply because Syndra has so much kill pressure on any target that she wants. They don't have a, a, a true tank, especially if Rek'Sai, you know, depending on what she decides to itemize or what direction she wants to go, Syndra could have kill pressure on everyone. That is definitely a scary thought, especially in the hands of Mission now. Looks like we might be in for a few shenanigans. Rerus is actually going to have to flash out. The rest of Rampage came out of the woodwork. And that now means that Tussle has another big opportunity. We talked about, you know, options in the early game. Uh, Tussle can now go top, try to punish that lack of flash. and go bottom, try to team up with the Braum and get the big hard CC there. Or he can cover his mid lane because Lucian needs to play that matchup aggressive if he wants to abuse Syndra. So offering a safety net by hanging around the mid lane, making sure that the other jungler isn't getting involved. Yeah, God, Kawhi will have his work cut out for him as well. Now, of course, Rerus, no flash. Probably not the biggest deal, the fact that it's lost on the Galio, since he's not going to have as hard of a laning phase and going to be wanting to itemize that MR up against the Rumble anyways. But he's still going to have to be pushed for You know, typically when you think about Galio, yes, he's against the Rumble, so he probably shouldn't be put in a, a bad situation. He can let that uh, that wave push into him. But the big thing about Galio is he's just the auto-push champion. Auto-push, get level 6, look for, you know, the ability to roam. Over and over, Washer and repeat. Now, Godquai getting pretty hard leashed here as Kai Wing and Unified starting off on the red. Yeah, and he's getting leashed on the bottom side of the map, so he does have a direct pathway towards top side, again, to uh, try to protect his top laner. So it works two different ways. If he suspects that Tussle might make a beeline for his Galio, he can try to be around the area, maybe secure the Subtle Crab, and get more of that safety net for his top laner for that flash to come back up. Right, now, we'll check in how the bottom starts, of course. Talked about a long range, and it's going to be difficult to really get in on the Varus and Janna early on. But Yutori Miyashi's already started by getting a little bit of harass off on Unified on the lower range Tristana to kick things off. Protected, as it were, by, you know, this very tanky front of uh, Dara. And it's the fact that they feel very confident that if it comes to an all-in that they're going to win. They even get the better level, too. So uh, just abusing the Braum Tristana. Again, it's Janna Varus, so you probably shouldn't have kill pressure unless the junglers get involved. But... I expect that the lane will look mostly like this for the majority of the time. That does mean, though, that Dara has to be so much more careful about placing his vision if they're going to be pushed forward. Where Tussle picking up the Scuttle Crab, again, creating that safety net for his bottom lane. If they're going to be pushed forward, he needs to make sure that he gets the vision down and keeps them safe to do so. Yeah, it's already starting to fall according to plan, though. We saw that in the draft, they definitely have learned a few lessons that we hadn't seen them really demonstrate yesterday. But now Tussle already going into the Hong Kong Attitude Jungle while the Jarvan's away. The Rek'Sai can play. And Godquai's focusing a little more on the top side. He's even going to get spotted out by that ward in the brush. Yeah, so we'll see if Godquai has a good read on where Tussle is, takes Scuttle Crab, and then walks up to the uh, enemy Krug camp, or maybe looks for a gank on Lucian right now. Looks like he's just walking it out for the time being. He's Still like, I really need this Gromp right now. Yeah, wow. It's, uh, it's very important to get your levels up. Makes a jungler grow big and strong. Mission's already down to half his health, actually. So Ramane started to bully this pretty effectively with a level advantage as well. And he can be pretty fearless. Like, he's got the cleanse. If the stun comes in, he can stop it from happening. But there's not a whole lot of vision on either side of that river, so... He doesn't necessarily know if God Quai's around. Yeah, the key thing is, is that he's playing towards the bottom side, um, making sure that he's near Tussle, making sure that he's near the lane that's pushed forward. He's got the two wards underneath him. So, like I said, Lucian needs to play this matchup aggressively if he wants to try to abuse it. They picked the Lucian into the Syndra, so obviously he felt comfortable, and now it's about staying safe. Staying safe, but being able to get a little harass on as well. And for all the bluster about Hong Kong Attitude having the strong lanes, I mean, it's very early on in this game, but they're the ones who are getting pushed back in two out of three of them. And you can even see that in, in the top lane, they had already spotted Godquai out. And he ended up backing away. So there's really not a whole lot getting done. And Hong Kong Attitude, I mean, there's definitely a lot of time for this team. But it seems like they're not making the moves just yet. Although, the, oh, hold on. I was going to say he might make it into it, because Godquai is actually going to walk into Tussle. Ooh, is he stopped the back? No, there he's go. going. Praise Seeker gets the knock up. Now, Godquai, he's got a shield on. He's going to have to flag and drag away. That means his jungle is not his for the time being. And Raptor Camp is so important because there's so much gold and experience on the camp. So this is actually a big deal right now if uh, Tussle can deny a lot of these Raptors. Might be in for Smite Fight. Throws the flag down once again. Tussle trying, but he's a little bit low on the health bar. Now Ramane Dara getting involved. And there's the Smite down. Looks like they're going to try to catch Mission out. Scatter the Weak stuns up Dara. Pretty big commitment there from Rampage, but the name of the game is Deny the Jarvan. 
Frankly, I just kind of like the uh, the action from Tussle. You know, he's making his back. If he doesn't run into Jarvan, that's fine. He's going to get the back anyway. Happens to catch him out. The Raptor camp spawns, so he tries to deny what he can um, from the enemy jungler. Again, Godquai is really the guy that you need to target and attack on this HKA roster. He doesn't have a ton of experience in the jungle. Formerly was their ADC, so definitely comfortable with the team. But the team themselves has said it. We're strong laners, but we do have a weakness in our jungle. Yeah, and that's what happens when you don't get as much experience as somebody like Tussle has. And even though Hong Kong Attitude came into this tournament looking like a more favored team than Rampage, kind of proved it during their previous matchup, we're already starting to see that they can take a few lessons out of their losses and start to move forward. And this is the win conditions you were talking about. Tussle being active in the early game, putting God Quai onto the back foot, that's one of them. Yeah, but it's about how he's been active, and it's putting and tracking the enemy jungler. It's not necessarily setting up his lanes and ganking very heavily. He's pretty much letting his lanes do a lot of the work for him, being pushed forward in the mid lane, pushed forward in the bottom lane, and then using those pressure points to pivot and invade, figure out where God Quai is. Yeah. Still be pretty effective in those team fights. Now, level six comes in. Ramane spends the last of his mana on a culling mission down a little bit low. He's pushed far forward too, but he's also playing up towards the top side where God Quai it's not too far away, and they've got vision in that river, so they know there won't be any wreck size out of nowhere. Ramane playing a little dangerous. It is in a great situation, yeah, for Lucian right now. He wants to get this big wave, but uh, it's going to force Tussle to actually hang around him just so he doesn't get dove or threatened by mission. Although now it's opened up a gank opportunity. Looks like it's bait. Insta flash, but he's still going to follow through with one of his own, and now Ramane on the chase. Looks like we're going to have some backup, but will it be too little too late? No, it is not, as Rerus comes in. First he's blood's going to be on Tussle as it's picked up by Rerus in the Scout of the Week. Scatters Ramane back to the safety of his tower. Ah, and an unfortunate read for Rampage right there. I understand what Tussle's trying to do. He sees that his Lucian's in trouble. He's got a big wave. He doesn't want to just allow Cinder to repeatedly punch him in the face under the tower, but just overreaches a bit. Just take the flash and walk away. Great rotation from Rerus there. Yep, and that's exactly what the Galio needs to do. We were talking about it earlier. Getting involved as soon as he can, level six is, and here's where it was. Yeah, and look at where Galio is on the map. The fact that he's not in the top lane, so that should have been communicated to Tussle that he can't overreach there. And unfortunately for him, his mid laner just didn't have the mana to follow up and to try to find that kill. That's a completely different story if Lucian is able to immediately relentless pursuit forward and trade that passive. All right, so despite giving up first blood and ends up going to the Galio, of course, as opposed to the Syndra, it seems like this isn't the worst thing in the world for Rampage, they've just lost a little bit of pressure in that mid lane. Well, that might be a little worse than the top. Taunts out, flag drag, Evie's already gonna flash it. He's out, but on half a health bar. And we talked about the first blood. The thing is, is that Rerus now has his MR item. He's got the Spectral's Cow, so he's gonna be very comfortable to push forward into that lane. It is gonna be an opportunity, especially with Evie, Evie, excuse me, not having his flash. Again, Jarvan Galio, there's a lot of CC and lock down there. Rumble's not the tankiest champion, so there is an opportunity for kill pressure here if Godguai wants to commit to it, but he probably needs to protect mission. Um, yes, the Syndra didn't die there, but he did burn his flash. That's a pretty easy lockdown maneuver once Rek'Sai gets her ultimate, so I would expect Tussle to hard farm, get level six, and immediately look at mid lane. Yeah, and the top's gonna be able to sustain itself for a little while, despite the fact that Evie can't quite do as much damage. Maybe a little more once he evolves into Flareon. <laughs> Thank you. Now I will never mispronounce it again. I've saved it. There we go. I was but always a Vaporeon girl, though. Really? Yeah. I did Jolteon personally, but uh, I just, electric types are OP. Anyways, back into this one. Yutari Miyashi is kept pretty keel on even with Unified, but they keep this pressure up, and obviously neither jungler has really gotten involved. I feel like that's going to change soon because there is an Infernal Dragon on the map. And that's going to be fairly valuable if this game trends this direction of going a little longer. I mean, the thing is, is it, again, opens up the opportunity for Tussle to start blitzing in and laying down that deep vision over the red buff jungle. Right now, again, hard farming to that level six, now has the ultimate. I expected that he would go mid and try to abuse the flashless Syndra, but there is also the other option of just trying to hunt down God Quai. You know, he does have the pressure point in bottom lane, might need to help them out if Jarvan pops his head down there. Very possible. So Ramane, he'll be the one picking up the blue buff on a couple more auto attacks, and they'll keep him full of mana, the thing that he wasn't able to do last time when they tried to make the 1v2 happen in the mid lane. Although, Tussle, let's see where he ends up going. Mission's in a uh, risky situation. He doesn't want to be pushed forward. The wave is already pushed in, so you can see that he's kind of like wandering around like, oh, I guess I guess I'll clear wards. I can't be forward. I just have to wait for the creep wave to come down to me because I don't have the safety of my flash. Yeah, trying to play it out as safe as possible. And there's a lot of control wards up in this topside jungle, but it's not going to help to try and spot out Tussle because 
Well, he's towards the bottom side, not going in for the dive yet. But it's totally fine. HK are doing the right thing. Mission is doing the right thing. He's just playing safe. He pushes it forward and then he just wanders away. He's like, please, get me my blue buff. Get me out of here. I just have to hang on a little bit longer before I can turn this lane and go aggressive again. Now, what that means is that uh, they can start playing the bottom lane for Rampage because the mid laner is not going to be putting a lot of pressure, which means that Lucian is opened up. You know, he's ducking in, he's he's uh, scouting for Ward, trying to clear out this track behind the Baron, or excuse me, the Dragon Pit, so they can open a, a gank path towards that bottom lane, which is always pushed forward. Yeah, it's obviously completely dark for Hong Kong Attitude. Ooh, Kai Wing, he gets caught up for just a second, not stunned, but meanwhile, there's a gank up top. Gogba, he flashes forward. Oh, and there's going to be Hero's entrance Here on top Tussle. of that rumble. There's no flash, and Eevee, let's see what he can do. Taunted up under the tower. Tussle trying in for the relief effort, but just too late. Yeah, too little too late, and great vision from HKA that allowed their mid laner to stay safe, which then freed up Godquai to punish the flashless rumble into the top lane. So they read the map. They understand we can't go bottom, we can't go mid, but we can certainly go top. Everyone hang tight. Yeah. Frustration, Ramane spends out. His calling just trying to get a little chip damage onto mission. Of course, he turns it right back around with the Dark Sphere. Tussle hanging on to top lane because he can't afford to give this minion wave away. Guitar Miyashi already a little low himself, but despite being down two kills, doesn't seem like nearly as bad as it was last time these two teams met. I mean, they're certainly faring better. Their towers aren't dropping as early, but hold on. HKA going aggressive because here comes Dive. mission. Oh boy, Yutari Miyashi preemptively heals it out, but Dara might go down anyways. Mission unleashes the power straight into the ultimate. Or the Unbreakable, I should say, and he's staying alive as Dara. Yeah, but the damage has been done. They do have a big creep wave. They also have the Janna, and it looks like they're going to commit to the push. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, uh, Lucian is pressuring forward, but he doesn't have the creep wave, and he doesn't have the sidekicks. All right, so Hong Kong Attitude utilizing a little bit of a power spike for themselves. Not so much in the items, but the fact that they've just got three people down bot to try and push it out. Oh, hold on. There is a TP, and they're also pinging deep. There's a ward there, so uh, Eevee could look for it, but looks they're like they're just going to let it go. Oh, here we go. Back again. Second round. Okay, so th thinking about it, but Rampage decided not to go all in on that, and that's first tower. Yeah, big problem was is that the bot lane wasn't in position. You have to think if Braum and Tristana were a little bit closer, maybe they would have pulled the trigger, sent the rumble down there, and tried to look for a skirmish. But overall, again, just a great read from HKA. Uh, they understand that uh, Rek'Sai was up into the top lane, had to respond to the big creep wave to try to hold onto the tower, and with information about where the enemy jungler was, Mission knew that he was safe to wander down into the bottom river, not going to walk into a 2v1 scenario, which freed him up for the realm. Yep. As a result of all that, Hong Kong Attitude, they find themselves with a 3,000 gold lead. It's only 12 minutes in. However, they will lose out on this Infernal Drake, because Rampage just realized, all right, well, you didn't take all the spoils of war, so we're going to come in here and just grab the rest of it. Yeah, just the half. tug of war of tempo. You know, if HKA are going to expend their time, maybe overreach on the map in terms of time spent, take the first tower, they're then going to make their immediate backs, which opens up a window for the Infernal Drake. And that's so important for Rampage, right? Like, not only are you down against a team that's going to be a little more laning dominant anyways, but your win conditions are try to play up into that late game. You have this bridge comp that you talked about. The Lucian's strong, the Rumble will soon be strong, but eventually it's gonna be all on the back of Yutoro Miyashi. And that's a Tristana that has an Infernal Drake, extra AD. You're not gonna want to miss that. And you know, everyone talks about the Tristana in the late game, but I'm also a big fan of Lucian in the late game. I think a lot of teams really uh, underestimate his damage as well as Rumble. I mean, you look at Lucian Rumble, you're like, bam, mid-game power spike. But late game, if these guys get the get the space, they're still putting out some massive numbers alongside that Tristana. Now, that's a good point. And all things considered, when you have River stacking uh, MR on this Rumble, or excuse me, on the Galio, it's going to be, you know, not nearly as effective as when Ramane is spending a big calling into his head, but Adaptive Helm up, of course, already completed. Another tower is going to fall, it keeps that gold lead going. And Godquai was a little bit deep, but he takes the Blast Cone Express out over the Rift Herald pit, and, uh, it gets aggroed on the way out. Does need to be a little bit careful here because you can tell that Rampage don't want to let this Rift Herald go just for free. They've also pulled Dara. So they have the uh, the numbers advantage, at least for the top side of the map, until HK decide they want to reset the map, send their Galio bot side, and move their bot top side. I think Rampage wanted to reset something, but Mission, he was able to spend a couple of cooldowns to push back Ramane and Tussle, or, and Dara, I should say. Dara just been on a roaming spree because at this point, landing phase is over. He can leave Yutori Miyashi to his own devices and there's no counter pressure. There's also the fact that, you know, Yutori's sitting on the Tristana. He's totally fine to play a side lane more so than most other AD carries. Has the uh, the ultimate to push back, has the rocket jump, so a lot of safety there. And you can use the Tristana then to create a pressure point. So you can already see uh, Yutori's hard pushing bottom, just, tr just trying to dissuade HKA from automatically walking up to the Rift Herald because he's threatening the structure. There's actually a lot of of Rampage members down towards Bot Unified. I don't think he's in danger of being dove anytime soon, though, because Kai Wing's there, so is God Choir, just about in the area. But once again, 
Rampage continue this trend of building up vision just inside of the Hong Kong Attitude bot side jungle. And they're also keeping a lot of it clear for themselves up top. They see Mission moving up here. But the problem is, is the vision's not where it needs to be. The central focus is going to be around that Rift Child. And you can see that HKA are starting to unlock their mid laner, roaming up there, threatening the Rumble. Again, uh, Rumble sitting on the variety bucket of items. <laughs> has has a book, has a Ruby Crystal. That's a discount build right now. It's not great. I know Rumble's a low econ champion. It gets a lot of his strength through his levels and his ability to use that ultimate. But he's not feeling good right now. And HKA can exploit that. Yeah, it starts to get a little bit better he does pick up a Haunting Guys and a Blasting Wand, so he's definitely well on his way to getting the Landry's Torment. Uh, but I think he's been a little more tormented than that to start things off. Now, looks like we're in for a dive. Teleport Ward already down, and Godfly looking to go in. Oh, they've got to jump up, and Yutori Mayashi is going to get a knockback. But Galio's right behind him, and even though Evie's there, it's not going to be nearly enough. Even Mission coming in, not needed for the cleanup duty. That's a double kill for Unified. And there's a lot of members here. Not the biggest creep wave, so they should be cleared out by Rampage, and their tower shouldn't be underhand, but hold on. Oh, man, Evie even flat but he gets taunted up off the back half, forcing out Ramane. It's ultimate now. Unified still trying to push forward. They've not got that many minions, but they've spent a lot out of the health bar. Yeah, exactly, and that's the thing. They chipped away at the health bar, which means that they now have the time to wait for the creep wave to crash, and now the inner tower is under threat, especially with Jarvan on the side. Yeah, Hong Kong Attitude just pulling the ghost switch and realizing they can take out a couple members of Rampage right off the bat. 4-0 on the kills. They're about to make it 3-0 on the towers. And there it is. As soon as they hit that power spike with... Uh, the, the best item in League of Legends, as it were, the Ardent Sensor. There they go. And it's just set up from the very beginning. HK have had a much better read on the map for pretty much the big two plays that they've made. Sets down the ward, gets the automatic teleport, and God, why, it doesn't get easier Cataclysm than that. Forces the flash as well as the rocket jump out of Tristana, which means as soon as she's locked in, she's not going anywhere. Vindar will fall down, but the biggest mistake that I think Rampage make in this instance is that Rumble overreaches a little bit, loses so much of his health bar, which means he can't sit under the tower and try to clear out with his team with Flame Spitter. Yeah, we were just talking about how he's been having a little bit of a hard time. It continues. That's only, well, he only, only had one death. He ended up getting away, but unfortunately they couldn't defend the tower off the back of it. So Rampage, they've definitely got some catching up to do. 6,000 gold is the deficit. Hong Kong attitude. I asked you at the beginning of this game, how big did it need to be at about 15 or so minutes for HKA to feel pretty comfortable starting some big things up like the Baron once it hits? What do you think about 6K? Uh, it's definitely big, and it's a big deal at 17 minutes. Again, uh, HK are just start starting to move into that portion of the game, however, when their setup is what we need to be examining. It was uh, questionable, I'm going to say, against 1907 Fenerbahce yesterday. So we'll keep our eyes. How do they move their vision? How do they protect their vision? And how do they create picks off of their vision? Again, it's the Syndra, it's the Varus, the Jarvan. They have a ton of potential. You now the picks have definitely been coming, and they've even got disengaged right now. Now mission, oh, that is a heal forced out. Godquai even tanking the last half of the culling. And now there's pressure on Rampage's side mid. Not a whole lot of minions, though. But we do see Galio starting to rotate over. He's trying to decide, do we collapse into the mid lane and look for the team fight, or do I continue to pressure forward on the top lane, create a big pivot point that we can then reset our backs and move towards that Infernal Drake? That's the thing for Hong Kong Attitude, though. They've got the choices right now. It seems like Rampage doesn't really have much of one. They kind of have to try and force down the mid. Yeah, I love the word that you use, choices, there, because I feel like HKA, it seems so subtle, and yes, the gold lead is pretty big, but the kill count is low, 4 to 0. That doesn't, uh, that's not indicative of a high action game, but I feel like HKA have actually been super proactive and driving the tempo and controlling a lot of these choices. You know, it was Tussle that, and I'm gonna hard farm to level six, I can punish the Flashless Syndra, but he never got the opportunity because he's always just been responding to what God Kwai was doing in the early game. Yeah, but he actually was able to preempt God Kwai in the very beginning quite effectively. We were giving him a lot of praise for being able to try and shut him down, but it just wasn't quite enough. And it seemed like that effort kind of went all out the window the moment he tried to save his mid laner and ended up giving first blood. Yeah, HK just understanding exactly where to attack on the map and then executing on it beautifully so far as they are going to go ahead and start up the Infernal. It should be uncontested again. Uh, Rampage, they're simply down in gold, they're down in vision, and they don't want to try to overextend risk, especially this close to a Baron spawn. You lose the 5v5 there, HK are just going to rock over to the Baron and pretty much close out the game. Yeah, that's 40 seconds until the Baron's going to spawn up. Rampage pretty much stuck under the mid turret for the time being. They've of course sent Evie up to the top side and Ramane down to the bottom just to keep waves cleared so it's not an easy Baron take when it does come up. 
For the Hong Kong Attitude, they've got all the tools in their kit to try and fire down anyone if they find them. But this is where the magnifying glass gets to be set up on HKA. If you're going to talk big, if you're going to be a top 16 team, guess what? The Baron's spawning in 19 seconds. The next dragon's going to be in Infernal. Where do you place your vision? How uh, easily do you execute on it? How are you managing your side wave control when you are setting up these big objectives? It doesn't matter if this is Rampage, if this is Fenerbahce, if this is SKT. This is where you need to clean up if you are going to walk the big walk. you got to have a big stick. Yeah. And it's definitely not going to be the most difficult opponent to prove it against, but we've seen Hong Kong Attitude already make some big mistakes, so maybe this is the time to try and rectify that to you know, better their own objective setups. It's also putting the onus on them to continue to drive the tempo of the game. Rampage at this point, they kind of want to sit back, look for these big 5v5s where they can utilize the Rumble. He's level 12, has two points in the ultimate, so despite the fact that he's probably not feeling too comfortable in his build, he still will hurt. But it's about buying time for uh, Yutori and this Tristana. Yeah, it looked like Hong Kong had to want to try to get the catch off, but it was Dara that they managed to find, and this is the team fight chance for Rampage. Can they get the kills off? Got quite, not quite going down, but they've got a Taunt up onto the Tristana Yutori Miyachi. Going down to Mission's ultimate. Power uh, unleashed on that last tick of health bar. And now Ramane trying to save some lives off the back half of it. Doesn't really matter too much. Evie's forced to flash back behind the, the wall of Dara. And Hong Kong Attitude not losing a man. They are too big, too tanky. Yeah, and they've got the tempo behind them as well as the creep wave. So this will be a free tower, which makes it that much easier to now blitz that vision on the top side, right? top red side jungle and make this Baron even easier to secure when they turn towards it. I suppose everything is free if you kill the ones who own it. Uh, <laughs> down goes the Tristana, results in the tower. Yeah, there's another Infernal Drake coming up in a while, but the Baron, it just gets easier and easier when they have all of this gold. I just wonder how soon are they going to actually try to go towards it. Right now, they don't seem to be in a big rush. Yeah, but let's take another look at that team fight. Unfortunately, uh, Utori there, he does have his flash available. He tries to use the rocket jump. It's interrupted, and then he's just CC locked that he never even gets the opportunity to flash away. Now, this starts, and it looks okay for Rampage, but it's when Rerus finds the taunt there on Trist. She gets locked down, she's got nothing left, and she just pops like a balloon. All right, I have a recommendation for you, Utori Miyashi, by QSS. I would just say press, press F. Well, a little faster, yeah. It's on D, though. Ah, see, that's his problem. <laughs> I stand firm on this. F I is mean, for Flash. You do, you do need, is, is it in, in Japanese as well? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know, actually. I've never played on the Jill. Um, but anyways, five kills to zero for Hong Kong Attitude. You talked about it not being necessarily as high of an action game, but it's played exactly to the win condition. They get the catches. Even in extended team fights, it kind of does feel like a series of catches. That just keeps resulting in towers. For every kill, they've managed to knock one down. And they might get another catch, though, as Tussle is trying to create space for his mid laner here. Might be in trouble. He was seeking prey, but it was Hong Kong Attitude that found it. Ramane jumping. There's the pit. Flashing out. Kai Wing and Godquai still hanging on. And looks like Ramane expends pretty much everything, but he does get out alive. The classic Janna player. You can always tell uh, playmaking so supports when they play Janna because they rush forward and everything. They're like, no, no, I got the slow. I got this. I'm going to throw the little bird at you. Ah, yeah, Janna supports. Kai Wing definitely showing up pretty impressive in this game so far. Let's see if they can keep it going. There's the lockdown on the rumble, and in comes Rerus. The gank squad was real in the mid lane. 23 minutes, we've got six kills on the board for Hong Kong Attitude. And again, it's another pick. That said, I know what uh, Evie was trying to do right there. Uh, Lucian up into the top lane had expended his flash. He was trying to buy time. You know, they're trying to force the waves to keep HKA bouncing between top and mid, delay them from starting this Baron. Unfortunately, Evie wasn't able to uh, get the hell out of dodge and back into the safe zone. Yeah, now Hong Kong attitude. It's pretty much all dark in that Baron pick, courtesy of the control ward. It's starting to fall pretty fast, but is this the time for Tussle to try and be the hero? I don't know if he's going to get the chance. His mission standing on the back, trying to force him back. And Dara. Got the block up here, but they can see they're going to turn around. Don't need the big purple worm. Instead, they want the fight turning it over onto Tussle if they can get him out of the picture while the Baron's still aggroed. Looks like Mission's going to get knocked back, but he's staying alive for the time being. That's a big shield Baron gets smited on down, and Rerus is still holding on to everyone from Rampage. Here comes Evi. Hong Kong attitude. They've not lost a man. Evi looking to come around the side, but it might be too little and too late. Godquai still stunned up. Looks like he's going to be the first casualty of the team, or is he? One more auto attack is going to do it for Ramane, but that is a death well spent as Hong Kong managed to get themselves four 
members on the Baron. And that was a better Baron setup from HK. This time around, they decided that, yes, the jungler is in position, but we have faith in our mid laner and our support to be able to clear out the back of the pit. So you can see Mission, he started on the back. Uh, he was just trying to force people out of line. He then burns the ultimate on Tristana before it's like, hey guys, we need to get Tussle out of here. Uh, Galio forces him over the other side of the wall, and meanwhile, the team just burns the Baron. Yeah, Mission nearly went down, but it was a clutch shield on the end of it, and we're still buying a lot of time. Eventually, you can see Godquai tags his way in. Probably unnecessary. A little bit ham there, but that's okay, Godquai. Uh, you can tell he used to be an AD carry. He's playing Tristana right oh, now yeah. on Jarvan. Wait, I don't have a jump backwards. So the only downside for Hong Kong Attitude right now is they don't have a chance to get the perfect game anymore that they screwed up the last time they met. Well, they also lost a dragon, so that chance... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that doesn't count. Does it, it sailed okay. a long time ago. Uh, well, I, I missed the boat every now and again. But again. it's uh, about improving on the, the weaknesses that we saw yesterday, which was the Baron setup. You know, it was two steals that really turned the tides of 1907 Fenerbahce's game. Uh, and this time around, it wasn't stolen, so we're already on the up. Well, they also did it so effectively to block out the... Potential steal attempt as Godquai finds Death Brush, but like it might be the death of Rampage. Rearus going all the way in. The Equalizer's thrown down, but it's just going to make them back off. Rearus even claiming a kill for himself, while the rest of the team is bringing up the rear. That's a double kill. That Galio deals some serious damage. Shield of Duran, Ramane stunned up. Scout of the Weekend unified with the last hit. It means the door is wide open for Hong Kong Attitude. And Rearus is just so far ahead of the clock right now. The gold advantage, you can already see 10k in his favor. Doesn't matter, he's also got the Baron on top of it. Effectively, he is unkillable. There's no one who can do damage to him, so he's free to just run freely into the back lines and create so much space for his team. And he's been a part of every single one of the kill Hong Kong, kills Hong Kong Attitude have had in this game, and it looks like that might be all the ones as they're looking to close this out, just zoning out Yutori Miyashi as the Unleashed Power comes in. He hops back into the fountain, but their Nexus Towers are being cut through. Dara, last chance saloon here as he throws up the Glacial Fissure, but the Nexus is bare with the minions on top. Tussle going down and out. Nothing they can really do here as Mission gets himself a spree kill. And this is going to be all she wrote for Hong Kong Attitude. This is the start. This team wants to be top 16. And a big win on their board is going to help them do it. And it's only a single kill as well as an infernal drink that denies them the perfect game. HKA came in today and said, we are going to smash everyone. And it started here with Rampage. Well, smash is definitely a very appropriate verb for that game. Hong Kong Attitude showed up and they put their money where the mouths are twice now against Rampage. And huge props to their top laner. Uh, you know, talking to this team, personally, I'm looking at their AD carry, I'm looking at their mid lane, I'm like, wow, you know, mission's really underrated, uh, unified, a super strong, one of the top ADCs in the LMS, but the team's like, no, 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 our big strong point is Rearus, his ability to understand when he needs to split push, when he needs to collapse for the team. Galio is a perfect champion to empower everything that the team believes that their top laner is good at. Certainly fits the meta as well, so really good time. And Rearus just showed up and delivered multiple times as a hero's entrance. And he really was the hero of that game. Yep. Was able to create massive pressure pivot points for them to move around. Was pretty much on point with the teleport. It was the big TP bottom that really got things snowballed ahead when they took down uh, Yutori as well as Dara there, catching them a little bit too far forward. Yeah, and we talked about the way that Rampage were going to be able to kind of stack up their comp towards the later stages of the game. Unfortunately, the snowball just rolled down too fast for them to really be able to handle. One pick turned into another, turned into a tower, turned into a massive gold lead, and there just wasn't a whole lot of chance for this team. But you can already see the adaptation that the LGL attempted there, you know, mixing up their draft. It wasn't the Soraka this time around, it was the Braum. They did have pressure in their lanes. They did effectively survive the lane phase. They didn't just get blown out. It was when HKA started to create these skirmishes and move around the map that Rampage started to fall behind. So even though they lost, there were improvements. Yeah, glimmers of hope for the Rampage team. Now to hear more about that game, let's send it over to Dracos and the analysts. Thank you very much, Pyra. An incredibly one-sided game. And really, it felt like LJL only got a chance, or Rampage rather, only got a chance in the first few minutes of the game. Uh, it, it felt like everything fell south after that. Yeah, as game time increases, probability goes down for winning, uh, and they have better picks this time around to try and do that. The Lucian, Rek'Sai is mm -hmm. a good combination if you're gonna try and snowball around mid lane. Syndra, while dominant, can be a little exposed to gank pressure just because she's so immobile. I know that Tristana for the late game as well. So when you look at the drafting, you give them compliments for what it's worth. That might be an improvement. I know Froskarin even alluded to that during the cast. They did do some things better than we saw from them yesterday. Of course, though, when we look at these first few early plays, you can see that 
while their, their head was kind of in the right space, they were trying to make the right things happen. Ultimately, a lot of the early plays backfired and that felt like what cost them. Yeah, a big problem here was just that Lucian has stayed on the map too long, ends up with no mana, no way to actually deal with this. Sindri is pushed all the way up, so they called a jungler to try and make this work. And it seems like it's gonna get a kill, but Galio comes in at just the right time, able to collapse on this play, knock up, tussle, and make sure that this does not result in a kill in the mid lane. Yeah, we we're looking at this while watching the replay, and how was a Galio even there? Well, it just happened that he was recalling to get a Spectre's Callan, was at the right place at the right time. But once again, they get that first kill under their top laner, and Rurus is able to run away with that. Compliments of Jarvan being everywhere that he needs to, started to warm up, and all of that early pressure of the Rek'Sai slowly dwindled. And Rurus was a huge factor here, specifically. He felt like he was everywhere. He's involved in so many of the plays consistently. Coming in is just a, a fantastic player for Hong Kong. Actually, if he, kill, he is the guy that seems to me, at least, that stepped up so much this game to make this one happen. I think that's really good. Just 100% kill participation. And moving forward to their rematch versus 1907 Fenerbahce, this is the big thing that you want to see is more people step up around them because it did feel like uh, they were not all on the same page come the team fighting phase. And hopefully this is a indicator that they're going to work better together. Yeah, a lot of good Galios throughout all of the tournament, particularly from Group C and D. And this is no exception to that rule. I think it was fantastic. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that because normally we see Galio mid, we saw Jensen play. This is this is the, the era of Galio top, it feels like. Is, is this something that we expect to see consistently or is this something kind of exclusive to the meta that we have here? It feels like uh, I'm not quite 100% ready to say why the priority on Galio has shifted from mid lane to top lane. I do think that uh, some of these teams are not ready to punish it in the top lane quite like how you would expect where you see people start taking things into it that really bully it hard early like Renekton and stuff like that that can shut it down um, and then it feels like a lot more of these players are more tank folks in the top lane and they don't want to play hyper carries against it and you know because you see Camille's with mm -hmm. Galios in the mid, and those, uh, when you don't ha play those in the top lane, the Galio mid becomes less effective because you don't have that combination potential to collapse when it's a potential 1-3-1. We've seen some attempts at counters to it as well, like Fiora from Chippies even on the Dire Wars. We know that Renekton is a pick that could be done into it, but ultimately, these counters, even as counter picks, haven't been successful. And so you do have to bring it back to, is there anyone in this tournament that can beat the Galio top lane? If no, why not pick it every single time, right? Maybe it is just that good. Right, it's a combination of, you don't have a good way to beat it in the top lane, and you don't have something you want to play that would make you force it into the mid lane. It also feels like we have a lot of mid laners who are much are, are pretty dominant. We've seen the Syndra play in there was he was consistently pushing that Lucian in. So I'm wondering if this is a hey, we don't want to put you on a Galio because yes, it is a playmaking pick, but ultimately Galio just doesn't do damage, right? And it feels like a lot of these teams have been reliant on their mid laners to make pretty big impact in the game. There's also that world where you do need to flex it to the top lane, most importantly, when you've got Cassiopeia running around in the mid lane, can do work against the Galio. Lucians that are being picked even in this game as an example, one more reason you maybe don't want to be in that matchup, and I think this is the, the biggest thing above all else for it, is you have to dodge the bad lane, and there is no bad one up top. Galio, though, feels like it's going to continue to be a varied pick. I want to shift attention back to Hong Kong Attitude because they have now locked themselves uh, into the elimination match, not first seed or second seed yet. We'll find that out as we move later into the day, but they are at least getting second, and this team does feel like, to a certain degree, that they have stepped up across their games. I'm wondering what feels like the biggest weakness for them right now as we look to the games ahead of them. I mean, that 18 to 20 minute mark, you see that the gold lead kind of slowly tapers off right there. And when it was against 1907 Fenerbahce, they actually end up losing that gold lead that they had. So I think they need to make sure that they continue to play aggressive in the mid and late game and uh, maybe clean up a little bit around Baron because they don't necessarily need to force these 50-50 Barons focus more on the turnoff, potentially, something like that. Yeah, so I think the word aggression is where you lose me a little bit here as well, because they hit mid-game, they hit late-game, and that aggression almost just completely stops. It almost feels too slow from them, and when you bring this back to the 1907 Fenerbahce match, I mean, you're giving them opportunities to come back into the game. That's one too many than you should have. This attempt at this fleeting illusion of a perfect game that they seem to consistently want to get hasn't been there for them, and I think they need to accelerate how they're winning games when they have leads. If they want to shore up what I would define as honestly Honestly, not just a weakness, but something that people could attack. And it does feel like that when we look at, of course, the, the double steals coming up against them, against Fenerbahce. So how do they, how do they speed that up? Is it a matter of just more aggressively playing around Baron, looking for picks? What do you feel like is, is the next step for them? I think uh, potentially just, I like, this is why I like the Galio pick a lot, is because it allows you to brute force some of those dive plays. So in this game, you saw that one time that uh, Rampage extended in the bot lane, they dropped the war behind, they go for that big TP play. I felt like they lacked some of those really backbreaking plays in that series. And I think that's the big thing to look for. Don't risk the 50-50 Barons. Don't get in, you know, fully even team fights. Try and find people extended in side lanes and blow them up. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. We're now going to send it over to Fish, who's standing by for an interview with the Hong Kong Attitude support.
Thanks, guys. I'm here with Kai Wing, the support for Hong Kong Attitude after their victory over Rampage. You guys have played Rampage twice now. What did you expect going into these games against Rampage? 首先恭喜你们获得刚刚那一场比赛的胜利。那你们现在已经对上他们两次了，然后获得胜利。呃，在面对他们之前，你对他们的期待是什么？就是在跟他们比赛之前。因为呃 ，R P R P G 这个队，对 ，R P G 这个队，我跟他们之前也是有团练的，就是我们很清楚，很呃，也是比 F B 更了解他们的呃角色啊，他们的打法是什么，所以我们在比赛上面就很容易可以针对他们的套路，然后来一些战术套路，呃，去赢下游戏。So Rampage is a team that we scrimmed a lot against, so we're familiar with them, we're familiar with their champion pools and how they play, so it's just easier for us to play against them and win against them. Well, that's great to hear. Second question I want to ask you is, you guys went up against 1907 Fibonacci yesterday, and it was an upset victory for them. You guys lost. What was the morale of the team like after that defeat? What were you guys talking about after that loss against Fibonacci? 呃，昨天你们对上了 FB， 那表现不如预期。那在经历那场比赛之后，你们团队心态如何？那你们做了什么样的讨论跟改变呢？因为昨天我们打 FB 的时候输了，也其实也是蛮意外的。因为有一些我的确定啊，就是我呃，比如说我的珍娜呃没有玩的预期中怎么好啊？然后我们有一些配合啊，而而且跟阵容来说，因为我们阵容只有开团只有大叔一个，然后我们其他四个也是不呃没办法开团的，然后对面有五个。以上就是很多的开团，然后可以打我们，所以我们拖到后面的话都很难赢了。So we were actually pretty surprised that we lost. Uh, I didn't perform really well on my Jana, and plus their team comp had like five champions that could start a team fight. For as for us, we only had one champ, one champion. So we were pretty sad that we lost. We're gonna be able to get the rematch later on. 然后我最后一个问题就是，你们有多大的自信？今零啊，今天能二比零吗？很大自信，今天一定二比零。I'm pretty confident we're definitely going to have a 2-0. Well, that's great to hear, Kevin. Good luck later on. We're going to send it to a very quick break. Back with more games later on. It will it be too little too late? No, it is not. As Rerus comes in, first one's going to be on Tussle. Yutari Mayashi is going to get a knockback. But Galio's right behind him. And even though Evie's there, it's not going to be nearly enough. Even Mission coming in, not needed for the cleanup duty. Can they get the kills off? God quite not quite going down. They've got a taunt up onto the Triss. Donna Yutari Mayashi going down to Mission's ultimate. There's the lockdown on the rumble. And in comes Rerus. The gang squad was real. That's a big shield. Baron gets smited on down. And Rerus is still holding on to everyone from Rampage. Here comes Evie. Rerus even claiming a kill for himself. While the rest of the team is bringing up the rear. That's a double kill. That Galio deals some serious damage. Shield of Duran. Ramane stunned up. Scout of the Weekend unified with the last hit. And this is going to be all she wrote for Hong Kong Attitude. This is the start. This team wants to be top 16.